Hello my friends and welcome to my channel, Amy Esther here and in today's video I want to talk to you about my SIBO story. I have a small intestine bacterial overgrowth or SIBO and I have had quite the journey with my good pal SIBO over the last five years. Have not been able to kick him out of my life. He is still there. And I also have several other chronic illnesses, which is why I created this YouTube channel in the first place is to share my chronic illness journey and story with you guys. So if you have chronic illness, whether it be SIBO, which I consider for me to be a chronic illness because I cannot kick it out of my life. I just can't get rid of it. It's always there. I've tried all the things. We're going to talk about them today. <laughs> but I do consider it a chronic illness because of that. I also have several other chronic illnesses. You can learn about them all over my channel. But if you are suffering from a chronic illness, please subscribe. I make videos for you guys to help you live a good life while living chronically ill. But today we are just talking about my good pal, SIBO. My SIBO story starts out on my honeymoon. How fun is that? So I lived a very healthy life. Well, I mean, I thought that I was really healthy. I had some small problems here and there. I had migraines and endometriosis and I had a lot of kidney stones. Okay, I had a lot of problems. But really the rest, of, the big part of my problem started on my honeymoon, sadly enough. So my husband and I got married. It was a beautiful wedding. We went to Jackson Hole for our honeymoon. We ate out at a bunch of restaurants. We ate out every single day. And the last night of our honeymoon, we uh, got the same food. And the next morning, we woke up not feeling so good. We were very sick. We were bloated. We just had all the classic symptoms of food poisoning and we it was bad so we drove home after our honeymoon just so sick both of us just just ridiculously sick and we assumed okay tomorrow we'll feel better let's just get through this food poisoning and we'll move on so 24 hours later my husband feels great back to normal and I still felt sick. I was still bloated. I was still having bathroom problems. I was still having a stomach ache every time I thought about food or I did eat. I just felt so sick. And now here I am five years later, still feeling the same way. So mine never went away. I got food poisoning. My husband's went away. Mine never did. And that that's, that's the story. But really want to dig deep into everything that happened, things that I tried, how I got diagnosed, all the things. So why my body went crazy, I don't know. Um, I have a few theories. One, I was on the Depavera shot, which was, it just made me crazy. And I feel like it just messed up my body so bad. Um, I got one shot, never went back because it was just, hormones just do not do well for me. It's a hormone shot. And I really think that was the big reason why my body, instead of fighting off this food poisoning, overgrew this bacteria and went crazy. I also was in a car accident about 10 years ago, which I literally just found out a couple months ago as I'm filming this video, where the top two bones, the axis and atlas bones of my spine were misaligned 13 degrees off actually and twisting different ways. I did not know this until about two months ago. Um, but I was in that car accident about 10 years ago. So it could also have been because of that, that, you know, the signals from my brain to my stomach just wasn't right. There's a lot of things that could have happened. I don't know. Um, probably a combination of all of the above, but I will say at that time, I was one of the healthiest I'd ever been in my life, minus the Depavero shot, um, but I was working out with a personal trainer. I had been eating really healthy. I had actually lost about, I think like 10, 15 pounds uh, from the year before that. And I was really in a healthy place in my life. And then my body went crazy. <laughs> so <laughs> after that happened, um, and it'd been about a week, I was like, this is not normal. Like, you're totally fine. I'm still sick. What is going on here? And my main symptoms were bloating was number one. And 
I mean, how fun is that? You get married and then you're super bloated all the time. Super fun. So super bloated, that was definitely my number one symptom. I also was burping like all day long. I would have, I call them hiccup burps because I couldn't stop them. Like when you're hiccuping and it's hard to stop it. And I just have these burps. So it would just come and come, it's just awful. I had gas, I had constipation, diarrhea, all of those fun things. And my stomach hurt every time I ate. So I realized that was not normal. So uh, after about a week or two, I went to a doctor and he said, oh, it sounds like you have an ulcer or gastritis, which I thought was weird because I didn't think an ulcer or gastritis would just start one day, but maybe it could. I was like, okay, I trust you. At that time, I just thought doctors knew everything and you go to a doctor and they fix you. That's what I thought happened. But that, now I realize that we're all just humans trying to figure things out. So I trusted him and he put me on omeprazole, which is like an anti-acid thing. Yeah, I mean, maybe I'm not a doctor, by the way. So anything I say medical wise, I'm just sharing my story, you know, anyway. So he put me on omeprazole for, uh, I think a month and I took it for a month. I felt worse after that. Every time I took it, it made me more sick. It gave me worse heartburn. Like I just felt terrible. And so he was like, oh, you just didn't do it long enough. We need to do it for three months. So he put me on it for three months and after another month of that, I was like, this cannot be working. And I did take it according to his recommendation, but I was like, this is not the answer. And I knew that that wasn't. And I was also on a very, I started going on a diet for gastritis and it definitely wasn't helping. And after that, I was just trying stuff on my own. I thought I just need to be extra healthy and then it will go away. <laughs> so even though I was already eating healthy at that point, I cracked down on everything. I was just eating so many vegetables, just trying to be a really healthy person. I was exercising, um, but the longer it went on, the worse I went. And the more healthy I ate, the worse my stomach got. So I tried a bunch of different diets on my own, of course, gluten-free, dairy-free, just kind of all the classic ones people say cause problems. None of them worked. <laughs> After about six months from when it started, I was like, I need to go see someone else because my I need, a, I need a specialist here. So I went to a GI doctor and he told me, you know, there's probably something else going on. So he did a stomach scope and all he found was that I had lact that I was lactose intolerant and acid reflux, which wasn't helpful because I was eating a diet that was supposed to be really good for acid reflux as well as not having dairy. That wasn't very helpful. He also put me on the low FODMAP diet, which I'm sure if you've had stomach issues, someone has recommended that to you. And I will say the low FODMAP diet did help my stomach to feel less pain. I felt less bloated but it didn't take anything away. Like I could do it for months. And as soon as I got off it, everything was back. So it was kind of a band aid, but it didn't help enough for it to even be worth it. And I tried it. I tried it for a long time. Like, don't think I just tried it for a few days, but I tried it for a few months and it just, it, it worked a little bit, not really. So after that, I was like, what is going on with me? And I knew I had endometriosis. So I had someone say, well, I've heard that sometimes endometriosis can cause GI issues. Maybe you have that. And so I went to my, G my OBGYN and he performed a laparoscopic surgery to remove my endometriosis and nothing happened. <laughs> That's a whole nother story with that side of things with like my endometriosis, but with my stomach issues, removing my endometriosis didn't help my stomach issues at all. So at this point we went to get more tests done. I had a colonoscopy. I had a HIDA scan. I had a CT scan. I had so many, so many things. So I decided to try something else at this time. And I went to more of a holistic natural doctor and he said, you know, I think you might have a small intestine bacterial overgrowth. So I went, I actually was working with both this holistic doctor and my, my like regular doctor. And they both around the same time mentioned SIBO. And so I was like, you know what, let's test for this. They're both mentioning it. Um, so I was tested for SIBO with my regular doctor. So they test me with a hydrogen breath test and to test this, they had me eat a very simple diet the day before. I think I could only have like white rice and plain chicken or something. 
and then I fasted for 12 hours and I did this hydrogen breath test and they told me it would take a couple hours. They said you do a baseline and then we give you a sugar drink and every like, I don't remember, every 30 minutes or so they would test me again to see if my um, levels were going up and my baseline was high. So they said, you're done, you have SIBO, get on your way. And I was actually really excited um, because one, I didn't really know what SIBO was at the time. Didn't realize that it was such a journey as it is. <laughs> and also just to have some answers and to say, okay, there's something wrong here. Like it's not just me that looks pregnant every day and just feels all this pain. Like there is something there. <laughs> so I went back to my my regular doctor, my GI doctor, and he said, okay, I'm gonna give you these antibiotics. And I was also working with this naturopath doctor. And then he was saying, you know, don't do the antibiotics, which story of my life, right? Do this, don't do this. That's what everyone is telling me all the time. And it's, it's just so hard to know what to do. So I decided to go with the naturopath doctor at this time because it'd been over a year of me trying it with, you know, my regular doctor. So I was like, let's just try it with this more natural approach and just see what happens. So it was very expensive, but he gave me nine different supplements that I took three times a day. And he put me on what he called the SIBO paleo diet, which was basically low FODMAP and paleo, no starches, no, like it was just a very restrictive diet. Um, I call it my zucchini and chicken diet because I felt like that's all I ate was zucchini and chicken. Um, but I did it for about five months and I felt no relief. <laughs> I felt about the same as when I was eating low FODMAP because it was low FODMAP, just a little extra things that I couldn't eat. And after five months, I got retested for SIBO and my levels had actually gone so I definitely gave up on that. I was like, okay, I've been doing this for five months. This is ridiculous. I am not doing this anymore. I'm eating nothing. I'm taking the dang antibiotics. So my doctor gave me Zyfaxan, which if you have SIBO, you've probably been, you've probably learned about that. It's supposedly supposed to just stay in your di digestive tract and it's supposed to be the best SIBO antibiotic. But I was like, I am taking that. Let's get rid of this thing. Took it, nothing still all the same symptoms, feeling terrible all the time. So they gave it to me again, nothing. They tried a different antibiotic, nothing. Nothing was working. So at this point, I just felt kind of hopeless, to be honest. I had actually been through many doctors and it felt like someone would say, hey, I have the answers for you, let's try this thing, let's do this test and then it wouldn't work and they'd give up on me and they say, sorry, I can't help you. And they send me to someone else and they send me to someone else. And that's kind of been my whole journey with this SIBO is people just kind of giving up on me. So after I had been to many doctors, I decided to try one more GI doctor, um, a brand new one who again gave me all this hope that he had the answers for me. And he said, let's test your SIBO again. And I was like, okay, I've tested a million times. I still have SIBO, but he tested me again. And this time they did it differently. They didn't just say your baseline's high, you're done. They actually kept me for the whole test, which I was grateful for because I wanted to see the whole test. I wanted to see how high it got. Did it get up and go down? Like what is happening here? And that's when they told me, no, you have a methane dominant SIBO. You don't have hydrogen dominant, which if you don't know anything about SIBO, hydrogen dominant works really well taking those antibiotics. Methane dominant does not. In fact, what I have learned is that methane dominant from my understanding and from what I've been told is it's not actually bacteria. It's something called archaea. And I am not, I don't know all the details of it. All I know is that antibiotics don't work on it. <laughs> Oh, so I was so frustrated because this had been years. This had been a couple of years of me trying this stuff. I had overtaken antibiotics. I was really frustrated at how many antibiotics I had had and not really needed them. They didn't work and not knowing what other problems they had actually caused from that. And if you know my story, I ended up developing many other chronic illnesses after my SIBO started. I have POTS, 
fibromyalgia, endometriosis, PCOS, Hashimoto's disease. I have so many things going on that all, not all of them, but a lot of them started from the SIBO. After we found out that I had methane, um, my doctor put me on Zyfaxan again, even though I knew it wouldn't work. I had I'd like done so much research on it at that point that I was like, this isn't gonna work. But he said, oh, if you do it with this other thing called neomycin, I think that's how you say it, but neomycin, then it will work for methane. And I tried that and surprise, it also did not work if you wondered. Um, and yeah, at that point I just, I honestly, I gave up. I've given up since then. <laughs> and I just decided I'm just gonna find stuff that works for me. Um, after about six months after I did that neomycin and Zyfaxan, I ended up getting pregnant um, with my daughter. And then I had her, a year later, I got pregnant with my son. I've had two kids now <laughs> through that process. When I'm not pregnant, I typically would eat paleo and that seemed to help my symptoms without being like insanely restrictive and making me miserable. So I would typically eat paleo through that time and it just kind of held it over. So I'd kind of just given up on finding something that worked forever and decided I'm just gonna put a band-aid on it. What works the best that doesn't make me miserable? So I typically would eat paleo if I wasn't pregnant. When I got pregnant, I have a hard time stomaching any vegetables. Like they just gross me out. I do my best to be healthy for my children, but it's really hard for me. So I just let myself eat whatever I can stomach when I'm pregnant. Um, however, when I'm not pregnant, I've tried doing mostly paleo. I have times where I give up on it and say this is dumb. It's not helping. <laughs> um, I kind of go through cycles with it. And at this point right now, I've had two kids and I have really gone back and forth. When I'm pregnant, it usually gets a little bit better. And then after I have my children, it gets worse again. I've tried the paleo diet. I've tried, you know, different things. I do have a plan at this point. So for those of you who want to know, you know, what is happening going forward, first of all, I am totally happy and okay with not ever getting rid of it if that's the plan that God has for me, if that's what's gonna happen, that'll be okay. I can live with that, I've accepted it, everything will be fine. Um, but I, that doesn't mean that I don't try things that may or may not work. Um, I don't feel hopeless anymore, but I just feel like accepting, if that makes sense. There's a couple things I wanna try. One is a supplement that many of you guys who have watched my videos have recommended to me. Um, I don't remember what it's called at this moment and my internet has been out today So I couldn't even look it up, but I'll just put it right here um, I'm going to try that supplement when I'm done nursing I don't feel comfortable taking a supplement that I'm not hundred percent sure is safe for nursing So after I'm done nursing, I do want to try that and then my chiropractor that I'm currently going to has recommended that I try a um, a soil based probiotic because I have tried so many probiotics and they have never worked I have not seen a single difference with any and let me tell you I've tried tons and everyone claims that they're the best one and they don't work for me so this one I'm like okay I'll try one more probiotic um, but he says that this one from his experience has worked really well for a SIBO patient so I will try that probiotic soon I'm going through some other treatments at this time and so I'm it's just a lot to do everything at once right so um, I will try that and then at the same time eat a keto diet is what my current chiropractor recommends for me so that is my plan going forward so you guys let me know below has keto helped you guys have you tried it if you have SIBO or what has helped you have you been able to get a handle of your SIBO or are you like me and you're still struggling to make your body cooperate with you. I'm here for you, I understand. We're in this together, my friend. Um, but don't forget if you have chronic illness that you're gonna wanna be subscribed to my channel so you don't miss any of my other videos. But that is my SIBO story, it's a long one. I hope you enjoyed that video today and I really hope to see you on my next video. See ya.